Well, the transfer portal frenzy has hit the University of Illinois basketball team. And I wrote in our probing the portal segment today, our, our big deep dive into who Illinois could add that so far Illinois had not had anyone enter the transfer portal. So I apologize for that, but this is no April fool's joke. Adam Miller, the freshman guard who started every game for Illinois has entered the transfer portal. That was first reported by Jeff Borzello of ESPN, but uh, multiple uh, people at 24 seven sports have confirmed that for us. It's Jeremy Warner, Joey Wagner, an emergency podcast reacting to this because this is pretty big news. Uh, I guess we shouldn't be shocked anymore, Joey, by uh, people entering the transfer portal. I mean, Alan Griffin was a little bit of a surprise last year, uh, a guy that Brad Underwood and his staff had identified, evaluated, and was turning into a good player. Uh, but he obviously wasn't either happy with his role or wanted to you know, get back closer to home and to his family, and that's understandable. Uh, but Adam Miller, after a year of not being the go-to guy and and not really being a high-usage guy with Andre Curbelo and Io DeSumo uh, decides he's going to look elsewhere and uh, he could decide to come back, but most guys do not enter that portal uh, without a coaching change and then decide to return. So just your initial reaction to what we thought was going to be one of their go-to guys entering the portal. Yeah. I'm really surprised Jeremy, because I thought that that was going to be his role next season. It's like, okay, he got through the, not maybe the role he envisioned season, and maybe he did, you know, I'm sure he recalibrated his, you know, expectations when IO came back, but certainly when he committed in that Jordan brand store, I don't think any of us thought that IO Desumu was going to return. And so it's like, okay, he got through that and, and probably, and I think you had a quote, Jeremy, in the story from Adam Miller earlier this season, where it's like, you know, Hey, it's, I've got IO, this is good for me. Like I, I'm understanding the role and you know, I don't know entirely what's going on. We're still trying to piece this together. It broke literally like a half hour ago. Yeah, Cause but, he, I mean, he showed maturity in saying some of the things he said, I've taken it. I've, I've grown and learned. I know I was freshman year was hard and he learned from that experience to say, I want to be a winner. I came here to win. And so he said, it's not like I had my bags packed or anything like that. I came to play for the school. Oh, uh, well that didn't last too long. So maybe he was just saying that because he knows what to say to the media, obviously behind the scenes, he and maybe people around him weren't very happy uh, with the way he was used or the role he had. And, you know, he had opportunities when Io went out, but Curbelo is the lead guard, right? I mean, Io is a lead guard. Trent Frazier was a really good player. I, I just thought, as you said, next year, I thought that all changed. I, and I think we saw some of that role grow where he had the ball in his hands a little bit more. He tacked the basket a little bit more. Yeah, and, and you were right earlier in saying that he technically he can still return to Illinois, and but you know, look, like, there's not a big body of work where this happens, and th uh, just it's a different happen. different thing than Indiana. All those Indiana right. kids, right? I mean, they enter the portal and say like, okay, what are my options? Then I'll consider Indiana. This is very different. I mean, you know who the coach is going to be here. Yeah, correct. So and I think what we have to do now, Jeremy, is recalibrate what we thought next season would be you know literally this morning it was like okay you know adam miller andre Curbelo, the, the lead guard situation is taken care of i'm sure they'd like to add on to that but that's a pretty good base to have there and we'll see what happens with kofi you know what the nba ends up telling him and, and there was a way you could kind of mentally construct this roster with some names that are in the portal and some names that they're still going after and and high school recruits and say hey all right and, you know this isn't you know, a total turnover, but now you're looking and you could turn over an awful lot of starters, all but Jacob Grandison, really. And you lose DeMonte Williams, perhaps, um, and Trent Frazier, perhaps. We don't know what those two are going to do. But suddenly, a lot of proven college production is no longer on that roster. And now you have to recalibrate. At this moment, at 5 o'clock on, on Thursday, you got to recalibrate what you think of next season. And again, this all changed in a half hour. So it could all change a half hour from now, but there's a lot of different views and a different lens to look at what next season could be. I think Adam Miller is going to be really good wherever he goes. I think he's a very talented player. I, I thought he was going to be a guy who could leap from eight points a game to 14, 15 next year. I, I thought he was that kind of caliber of player and play good defense doing it. Yeah. And I thought he really, you know, the rest of his game really filled out nicely this year. So I, I just thought it was in front of him. And uh, apparently he didn't see that at Illinois. Uh, but you could lose. I mean, there's so much still up in the air. I mean, you're going to lose Io DeSumo. You're apparently going to lose Adam Miller. 
We haven't seen official news yet on Trent Frazier, Demonte Williams. What do we look into the Twitter account, giving them their senior send offs? I, I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that was planned and saying something, but we didn't get an announcement. It was just kind of, Hey, seniors, thank you for what you did. Um, Kofi Coburn is going to enter the draft. We probably won't get an answer on that until July. Um, you know, Georgie Bashanishvili, what's his role next year? So, I mean, the t- Andre Curbelo and Adam Miller and Jacob Grandison felt like the three givens that you were returning, right? And then if you bring Kofi back, boy, you could be a top 10 team, top 15 team in the preseason. Then you add some pieces in the transfer portal. This team's going to turn over almost its entire rotation. I mean, Curbelo and Grandison could be the only – players really from that rotation who returned because I, I don't consider Coleman Hawkins a, a key part of that rotation last year I think he could be good so all of a sudden you could replace that entire thing we, we know how that goes I mean you you could be solid you could be good I mean every team seems like in the middle to the bottom of the Big Ten is going through this right now we get to that larger discussion but you're now looking for to replace potentially six of your top seven scores at least five of the top six and two of your lead guard roles, which I guess that's the upside now is you can go to an Armand Franklin in the transfer portal and say, you're our guy, you're, you're our leading scorer next year. If you want to be that, um, if you want to say Ty Ty Washington, you're questioning what your role was in November. And now look, look what you could, you could be our, our starting guard next to Andre Corbello next year and, and now you got to have multiple of, of those guys uh in, in the transfer portal or through recruiting brandon podzimski come on in you're going to play a key role uh even if you're not ready for it we need you uh to come in and play that key role that's a lot of roster turnover and you know if kofi comes back and you add the right transfers i think this team could still be really good and that's the benefit of the transfer portal but the downside joey is you don't know who, what what players are returning like you can't count on anything year over year to uh what, what your roster is going to be the next year yeah, I mean, you can ask a crew, how many shots would you like to get up? And you let us know because they're here for you. It's really, it's changing. Everything is changing. There's a larger discussion uh, about the impact of the transfer portal on college basketball and how long will it be like this, you know, where it's like every day you look up and everybody's in it and it's like, oh my gosh, when did this happen? But, you know, I, maybe this isn't still gloom and doom. I mean, this is not, ideal for Illinois basketball let's not no they just lost a really good player yes let's not pretend that it is but next season isn't automatically Brad's second year in Champaign either depending on you know Kofi Coburn and what happens and you know obviously there's still pieces there so when I said it changes the calibration it does but I don't think it sends it all the way to the bottom you know I, I think there's a way to to re- remake this but it is going to be a remade roster and I think what it also does Jeremy is We've seen the hype and we've seen the videos, but now there has to be really pressing questions about what Austin Hutcherson could do in Champaign next season uh, and where he's at from a health perspective, because everything else in the videos looks pretty good and everything we had heard from him before looks pretty good, but we haven't seen it in a basketball game in the Big Ten. And that is kind of the the cloud here for me. And maybe I'm the only one who has that cloud, but, but that is still there, but suddenly, there's a, you know what what can he deliver and, and what could that mean for this team I think there might be a, a little bit more weight on on what he could do yeah Austin Hutcherson I thought even this year felt like a bonus like if he's good oh my gosh you could have the best backcourt uh, potentially in the country if you had that to Iowa DeSumo, Andre Curbelo and you know Trent Frazier and Adam Miller now and in this year I felt like he's an x-factor and it's kind of fun to have like that guy's an x-factor if he's really good and as good as the Illini staff thinks he can be then boy uh this could be a lot of this team could be really good now it feels like he's turning almost into a necessity now that can change with transfer portal additions here and they will make them um but it's now like there's more weight as you said on Austin Hutcherson because they need a guy who can score buckets. And, and I'm with you. I mean, I'm really intrigued by him. He's six foot seven. Brad said he's one of the best shooters on the team. He's the best athlete on the team. He's never played a game of Division One basketball. That, that, that's the I, I have no idea what my expectations are for him. So I see it on the board. You see it on the board. People are saying Austin's going to be great. Hey, if you want that optimism, 
Awesome. Maybe, maybe he's got that ceiling. I mean, Brad Underwood certainly seems to think so. And I have no proof he won't be. Yeah, but there's I mean, also there's also the the possibility that this guy has had back injuries, you know, back issues since a, a car crash that probably kept them from being a Division One recruit in the first place. And why he went to a D three is he had a spot. Um, and if that comes up again, you might not even have any kind of impact. So the, the swing of possibilities for him, uh, the range of possibilities is enormous. It could be from starter and one of your top scores to not making an impact because he's hurt again. So to being in California all season. So I, I, don't, I don't think the staff and maybe they feel good uh, about his health, but I don't think the staff is, is going into next year saying, yeah, Austin Hodgerson, let's pencil him in for 30 games and 12 points a game. I don't think they can do that. I, I, I think that'd be ridiculous for them to do that. If they do, they've got to have an awfully, awfully good feeling about what the, the reports back that they've heard from his progress out there. And even still, that, that feels to me like a, a gamble. So that look, the transfer portal, give it, then it take it. And you know, the way this is going, we've seen basically like three different names every day before noon, right? So Illinois is going to have options to rebuild this roster. But, you know, Adam Miller was, you know, kind of the, hey, the Peoria to Chicago, the stay home, the Mr. Basketball, the whole nine yards. And it, it's just very, I, I'm still kind of trying as we sit here and talk to him, I'm trying to process like, okay, what? Yeah, well, you're not the only one. I mean, I felt better that I was shocked by this. When Coleman Hawkins tweeted out April fools, right? LOL. And no, I mean, this is not, this is not a joke. Like he actually entered the portal. Um, so I, I think it's probably shocking to him. You know, there can be, you know, buzz of, Hey, he's not that happy with his role. I, I will go back to this. I mean, I, I really like Adam, right? I love talking to him. I think he's a phenomenal player, but he committed to Illinois in the fall and didn't sign. And then the spring came around the spring signing period and didn't sign right away. And there was always just this, you know, like, is, is he completely all in on this? And I understood like, Hey, I would assume his decision could have a huge impact uh, on his role and what he wants to do. And he, he kept with it even after Ohio, you know, came back and, you know, he would have had to get out a national letter of intent to do so, but he kept with it. And uh, Adam, you know, had a good year, I thought for Illinois basketball, even if his, you know, shot, shot percentage wasn't exactly what you want, uh, but it, it just, it's not as shocking as you look back. And I, I did talk to uh, his mother, Andrea Gary at the big 10 championship. And she didn't mention like, you know, his role, he had to change his role and that was different for him. And at times it was, it was difficult. So um, apparently they just, they just weren't too happy with it. And I, I wish him the best, but now it just means Illinois basketball, you're, you're in the mix with everybody else. It seems that, this transfer portal is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And we can call it the free agency of college basketball. You don't see half rosters getting oh, yeah. overturned with free agents. You can see it with trades and free agents. Um, there's more turnover now in college basketball than we even see at the professional, at least the NBA level. In Europe, I know it's a little bit different, but it's more than that. And uh, it's going to be very interesting, Joey, if this keeps up this kind of huge exodus or huge activity because it only increases every year in football and basketball and with a one-time transfer rule i think that's why we're seeing it increase even more but is is there a reaction to it um you know if you're if you're a coach like how how many freshmen do you want to recruit or how do you go about recruiting i mean you got to get guys who are are pretty all in but even guys you thought were all in might not be you know i do wonder and i'm not I don't I want to make a click. I'm not reporting this, but I sit here and try to think of all of this is what impact just did the strangeness of the year, like being tucked away and, and not really being able to, to go out. And I, look, I have no idea if that's what happened with Adam Miller, but I do want to, cause it was so like, somebody told me like, it's never been harder to be a freshman and college athlete than it is right now. Like you, you go to the gym, you go to the game, you go home and you know, I, I don't know. I have no idea what impact, but there's so, and maybe there's, if it's not Adam Miller, it's beyond, right? And there's other freshmen who are like, this is not the ball game that I thought I was signing up for. I don't know, but it just feels like this is a really kind of a perfect storm of, of the, you know, the one-time transfer that, that we anticipate seeing shortly and the, the pandemic and all of these different things. Maybe this is just the, the culmination of it across college basketball. I don't know, but I'll tell you, Jeremy, I, 
I didn't think I, I would see it in, in like a what, what I what we would commonly think of as like a role player on this Illinois basketball team or in the rotation. I, I just didn't expect to see an Adam Miller in there, anyone else, and the, a potential that was go-to kind of, player like that. That's what's surprising. I think Alan Griffin last year. I thought. That's a starter. That could be the second leading scorer on the team, kind of, or, or maybe the first, like if it was Iowa left. Like th- those were kind of shocking. But I, you know, and I, I, I'm I'm a fan of, of players being able to move. If they want to move. Absolutely. Uh, but but there is there's consequence of that, and that's that's more roster roster turnover, and we're seeing it. You know, and, and this as we sit here and talk about this and all these different, you know, from statistical and, and what this looks like on the basketball court there are a lot of repercussions that are going to come from for every team, but you talk about Brad and he was so invested in building this culture. And to do that, it requires a little bit of roster continuity. You saw with IO with DeMonte, with Trent, with Georgie. And now it's like the back of my mind, I'm wondering, does he have to restart because there are going to be so many new faces in there. Who's going to be the veteran. If, if Trent and DeMonte elect to not return, I don't know if they're going to, Who's going to be the veteran voice to be like, hey, listen here. Like, th- this is – we've worked really hard to do this, right? So how do we continue to do this? And it's a little thing. And ultimately, that's that was going to be different because they were going to bring in new players anyway. But – I mean, your leader next year has to be Andre Cabello because he's your best player. I mean, Kof Coburn, if he comes back, sure. he's a leader, but I think it's always usually a guard, right? That that's going to be your leader. Jacob Grandison's a, a veteran. He's going to be an old man. I think he's going to be 23 <laughs> next year. Um, so he certainly should, could be that if Georgie decides to come back for another year, like he's obviously an energy guy that can help you, but it's gotta be your best player. I mean, I would assume it was the, the guy on this team. And I think Andre Corbello has to be that. I thought Adam Miller had that kind of potential uh, too, to kind of be one of the vocal leaders there. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a blow. It's an absolute blow for Illinois basketball. Now they got to make up for it with, with the, uh, I guess now you have an export. Now you need several imports here. And, and that's the problem is, you know, you don't know in the post how many you're going to need yet. And now at guard, you're replacing two of your star three or four. I mean, Demonte Williams is kind of a half starter. So three and a half of your starters on the wing outside of Kofi Coburn. At most, right? Yeah. We don't know what Trent Demonte are going to do, but you're, you know, I.O., they only the dude on senior night and he's a junior, so see ya, right? He's going to the NBA, he should. Adam Miller, then if, yeah, you're right, you bring Trent and DeMonte, should they elect to move forward? Whew. I mean, that is just a lot, but, you know, positive, there's not really a lot of positive spin, but like you said, you can go in a Zoom meeting and, and talk to a recruit, be it a transfer hey, high school. Guy. Hey, you, you want to, you want to go somewhere else, give him Mario a call back and say, Hey, Alabama, like we, we got a star role for you here, man. Shoot it a hundred times a game. And we are just getting started. I mean, whatever you want to put up is, is you. Uh, yeah, man, it, it, it changes a lot. I, I would think about what Brad is, is both seeking and pitching and we'll see how it plays out and when, I mean, that's the thing with this gym. We don't know the timeline. We, we don't know when, to expect like, okay, X player is just kind of like before the season. <laughs> like yeah. that, we, we just don't know w- when is this going to happen? Yeah. And uh, with the draft process, you know, I asked Brad about it in, in February, just about, you know, what it's like as a coach now that that players are prolonging the process more into the spring. I remember covering Bruce Weber and Tracy Abrams was committing as a sophomore and that was normal. Like that doesn't happen. Uh, anymore and I I understand why I thought it was ridiculous these guys were committing to coaches when they're 15 years old when that coach it was like a 30 percent possibility probably not going to be there Um, and now you you have that different but you also have the transfer portal that changes everything the draft that that goes longer on these last couple years where you have no idea uh, what your roster is actually going to look like so you just have to have your hands and you know uh, in so many fires here just to be able to find some players, but yeah. I I mean, now you're calling up Armand Franklin tonight and saying, you know, you can go back to Indiana and that's fine. Or you can come to Illinois and, and be our go-to guy outside, you know, along with Andre Corbello. Yeah. And then now the other side of this, I'm curious where Adam ends up. Right. I mean, remember what he said, uh, at, at, uh, the Jordan brand store, 
That would oh, add another. That would add another little or another big uh, to the Illinois Michigan thing here. But he said Juwan Howard was calling, and, and he ended up going there. It was like Arizona and Arizona State that were really into it. But um, you know, Michigan's always always one to watch, and I don't think Juwan Howard ever is, is trying to make friends. I'm not reporting this. It's just right. he he mentioned Michigan at uh, in November before he signed. So. Yeah, just. What a day, man. Like to pull back the curtain quickly, like we were in a football Zoom. Yeah. And I scroll over to Twitter. And I mean, I, you're I, I not just, the only ones asking questions in that football Zoom. <laughs> right. Well, it, I mean, you know, usually, Jeremy, I, I would say because we work with Derek and Derek is the best at this, like, I don't feel like I, I'm like, oh, wow, because, you know, I, I'm surprised by it because just Derek is really good. And can I, I give you, surprised. can I give you his quote? I said, are you as shocked as I was? Um, And I said, I did have some weird vibes throughout the season from certain people. Uh, But he said, pretty damn surprised. (laughs) So, you know, he he had heard and, you know, I'm I'm fine saying this, like, hey, that there might not be complete happiness with the role. um, But, I mean, you have Io DeSumo, he's an All-American, right? And you have Andre Curbelo, who's a point guard. And I thought, I, I thought Adam was saying the right things. You know, you, you never know if it's, if it's really how he feels, but. Um, I also thought he was displaying the right things. Like yeah. he wasn't scoring. So it's like, oh, I'm going to play defense. I'm going to rebound and I'm going to die for these loose balls. He didn't milk it in. I, yeah. I don't think he played. He was the best darn player on the floor against Loyola. Like I thought he was, yeah. and to me, like that was like a, if, you know, if I were him, I would think, Hey, Hey. I can see this. And even if he was, you know, displeased with the role with Io, there was always a shelf life on it. It was always this year. Like, it wasn't like, when is this going to go away? It was like, not, I shouldn't put it like that, but like, when is my role going to change? Well, the answer was always next year, like literally always. So that, that was just, it's just, there's a lot of different things that I, I have questions about. Yeah. And, and I know fans and stupid fans are going to attack him personally. Yeah, don't tweet him. Don't tweet him. My God. Don't don't tweet him. Don't Instagram him. Let him be a kid and make a decision. I mean, don't. And Chris, Beard, Chris Beard can leave whenever he wants to leave. Brad Underwood can leave whenever he wants to leave. Adam Miller should be able to be, you know, have control over his destiny, right, and, and go where he wants. And I know it hurts Illinois basketball, but now it's Brad Underwood's job to make sure it doesn't, right? And that's that's the key moving forward. Yes, and yelling at him didn't help him. Uh, it literally helps nobody. Nobody on the face of the earth is yelling at Adam Miller on social media, help a single person. Don't do it. It, It's so embarrassing at every single level. It's embarrassing. Agreed. All right. That's all I got. You got anything else, Joey? No, I went on my soapbox. I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to change the world, the Twitter world, social media world with that uh, soapbox there. One curmudgeonly 29 year old at a time. (laughs) All right. Appreciate you guys listening to the Alana Enquirer podcast. Uh, We'll break this down more and, boy, this off is going to be crazy. It already is, uh, but it's going to add to it. And Adam Miller leaving on top of Io DeSumo leaving. Illinois has got a lot of work to do with their roster. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Everybody take care of each other. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on the Online Enquirer podcast.